got the new cool Very Master 123 plow on behind me. Uh, this is a demo plow we got off Meat Farm Machinery. We have this plow out about seven days now, so we've got a nice bit of plow with it. Um, got to try it out. We spent the first few days kind of, well, not really the first few days, we spent just setting it up. Um, Maybe not just set up exactly how I would like it, but set up fairly nice. Um, what I'm going to do is a bit of a review on the plow and my opinion of the plow and things I do and don't like about it. Um, this plow was got off meat farm machinery. They're a coon dealership since May 2014, I think it is. And this video is not sponsored by Coon or by Meat Farm Machinery, so it will be an honest opinion on what I think of the plow. The tractor I'm pulling this plow with today is a 7920, which is a 100 and, or 220, 230 horsepower tractor. Um, the rating that Coon have on this plow for horsepower is 130 to 175 horsepower tractor. It's what the plow is rated for. And we have had both the 150M and the 150R on this plow. And they're well able to pull it. But the plow was quite heavy for turning on the headlands. We were in small enough fields so there was a lot of lifting and turning with the plow. Personally on the farm we like to have a tractor that's more than capable for the job because it's easier on the tractor, the tractor lasts longer, it's not running at full capacity the whole time and also it's easier to operate. Um, now Meat Farm Machinery say that they have a John Deere 145R out pulling this plow and I do think it's possible but I think in the kind of ground that we do be working in sometimes, which is small fields with a lot of turning and a lot of lifting and dropping of the plow, that that would be hard on your tractor because there is a fair bit of weight to this plow, but a tractor that size would be well able for the plow, as the 150 and M and R were well able for it, it was just slippy headlands he just didn't have that grip on the front even with full very master plow which means that the plow is a very width so you can adjust the width you're plowing at and um, the narrowest the plow can plow is 12 inches and the widest that will go out to is 18 inches now i'm plowing at the full width of the plow which is 18 inches which i would always plow at the full width of the plow if the conditions are good and you're able to pull the plow at full width. Very width is also good for the likes of straightening your run and moving in and around poles as you can see in a few clips here. Um, also has a front sod adjust or the front sod is also adjustable on this plow which is nice to if you change tractors, bigger, wider tires or anything like that, that you're sitting different in your furrow, it's very easy to move your front sod in or out so you're matching your previous run. And all this is done hydraulically on rounds, so everything is easily adjustable from inside the cab, which is also nice. Because of this plow being very width and having the adjustable front sod, it folds in very compactly for the road. And another thing that makes it very compact on the road is where the depth wheel is positioned on this plow. It's further up than normal plows. Most plows have the depth wheel at the very back of the plow, which is also a hindrance, I think, for plowing up around headlands because your wheel, you have to be further out from the hedge because your wheel is in against the hedge, whereas this plow here with the depth wheel where it is located is you can plow right up to the hedge with your back sod and not have to worry about your wheel going up into the hedge or getting caught on briars or anything like that. The depth adjustment on this wheel is very easy, the handles on the screws, if 
for letting them in and out make it easy that you have that little bit of leverage. Other plows that I've used, you have to have a spanner to open them and adjust them, whereas this plow, you don't need any tools to do it. Everything you need is on the plow. I also like that the wheel has shock absorber, which means that when you turn over the plow that the wheel's not coming down with a bang, which leaves it that it, the plow is very easy on itself. Because of the depth being so easy to adjust on this plow, it's very easy to get out on your final run of the headland if you're plowing. Because of the depth being so easy to adjust and set on this plow, it's very easy to get out in your final run of the headland if your final sod is into the field and set your depth up full so your back sod is out of the ground so you're not leaving a rut in in the middle of the field which is nice for the skimmers on this plow are quite big compared to other plows that I've used um, which I quite like they seem to bury the trash quite well throw it into the furrow I think they'd be quite good for the likes of beet and potato ground where there's a lot of loose trash on top of the ground I think they throw it into the furrow quite well. Before I end this video I just want to walk around the plow and just point out a few different things like the tips you can see here if I clean that off there's a lot of wear left on them tips the tips will probably wear down to about there and then they'll have to be changed um, and you can see here what I'm talking about the jut out on it it goes out that way maybe you can't really see see you see it's worn it's not as big of a jut out here and it's a bigger jut if I get a better bit of light on another tip I go around you can see the skimmers are quite big um, one thing I quite like about the boards on this plow I forgot to mention it was the share so the share is that line there or the shin sorry this is the share up here and then this is the shin and then all this here is the board so the shin comes out a nice bit into the board and on other plows the shin is narrower the shin might only be that width there might only come out to this bolt and go down whereas this shin comes out to here and what I've noticed on other plows is that the board wears in here at this point and then when that wears it starts wearing in behind the body of the plow and you don't want that wearing because that's the plow it's not supposed to wear so I think when this plow would wear that the shin would wear which is a replaceable part and it's not as expensive as a whole board so the shin would wear out quicker than the board will wear out and I think it's a good idea that this comes out that little bit further and means that you're not going to have to replace your board till the board goes out here so when this gets thin here and wears to this point here where the body of the plow is there you'll change the board instead of changing it if it wears out here which you don't want and then you've got the pressure or the release mechanism on this plow is hydraulic so that's what all these pipes are running along and then you've got these back here so if it hits a stone or something the body or the leg of the plow will pop up out of the ground and won't lift the plow out of the ground so this is done hydraulically on this plow so the pressure of that is set up here so this is the gauge for it and you set the pressure this is the cylinder for holding the pressure of that so if you're plowing in really tough ground you'll turn up your pressure so your boards will stay in the ground and not want to lift up out of the ground um, and that's I think it's all very neatly done like there's these little hooks to hold the pipe in place and make sure and it's all neatly run up inside where nothing pipes run the whole length of the body or the frame of the plow um, what I was talking about with the other plows the five 
the 153 and the 183 is that this body here, this box that runs the length of the plow, that would be thicker. And that also this main headstock here, which the linkage is hooked on and everything is all beefier. Another thing that I like about the coon is the very wet mechanism is all in under this cover here so it's all inside in there and here's the very wet ram here you can see your numbers so that's the ram for the very wet and then that goes into here which has all the very wet mechanism for all the different sods and i quite like this design because for one mostly the very wet mechanism all runs down on these beams on the outside on other plows and it means that it's just sitting out but whereas this plow it's all in there and it's safe and also that this cover or this extra bit of support supports the plow the whole way so there's six three sods that have extra support because of this panel here and then the only point where the plow could break or maybe crack as it gets older is from here on and that's supported by the wheel so i don't think you'd ever really have a problem with this plow cracking under its own weight or anything like that and um, then this is the ram for the front sod adjustment here uh, then which I think is kind of a good idea, which I do think is a good idea. I lift it up here and I'll show you. Clean off this dirt. The um, there's no chance of this plow unhooking. You can't let down the lift arms here. If I let down the lift arms, they're not going to come out. So what you have to do is you open these pins here. And this this pin, I'll show you on the other side. That pin there pulls out, and then you can kind of see that drops down. This whole piece that's on the link arm of the tractor comes off, and then you just have to worry about taking your top link off, which I think is quite a good idea for if you were just dropping the plow quickly to go and change something, or go pick up a trailer or something like that, that it's very easy to drop off the plow and hook it back on again. Um, the stand on the plow is fairly simple I just it's just on a spring so you pull it out and twist it down and you open this release this screw here you release that screw there you release this screw here and that releases the pressure on it and then you can pull the stand down I don't have it high enough out of the ground. Um, you can pull the stand down, it's very simple. And then you just pull it out and lift it back and tighten this up so it won't open. Um, it's a good design, it's simple, there's no chance of the stand. When that's tight, there's no chance of the stand going down. But I think that the spring could go or the nut could get seized or stuff like that that can happen which will happen probably in years to come maybe when the plow gets older i think that could become a problem that i don't i'm the stand is a good idea but i don't really think it works out great in the long term but I could be wrong at the same time um, another thing I'm not mad about in the plow is the skimmer or the discs on the back can only move out that far or I go around the other side can only move out that far out of the way of the skimmer so it's not very far so when a big lump of dirt for when you're going in on the headlands a big lump of dirt goes up and gets stuck in between the disc and the skimmer it's very difficult to get it out but that's only a minor detail and it's not a big deal like you, you don't really have that problem i've had the problem a few times but it's not a big problem 
and the last thing I'm not mad about in the plow is the pipes. There's pipes, a lot of pipes on this plow, which I like the fact that you can have Everton on individual spools, like the vary width and like the adjustable front sod, but there's pipes everywhere as you can see, and the pipes are quite long and they're hanging down and I just be worried I'm always worried that the pipes will catch something when I'm lifting it up or down or when I'm turning the plow over. I think that the pipes could be shorter maybe or run a better way that there's less chance of them getting caught on anything or just that they could be held up neater. So overall I like the plow, I think it's designed very well. I think it's built very well um, there's nothing really major that I don't like about the plow it like does it good thanks to me farm machinery for giving us the demo of the plow and letting me do the review on the plow and I hope you enjoyed the video